Happy new school year! We are starting our fifth year of homeschool this year and are excited to share our family curriculum picks with you. I have a second grader and a preschooler who do a few subjects on their own, language arts, math, and typing. The second grader, the preschooler just does language arts. So that kind of covers their individual subjects. Everything else I try and do family as much as possible. So I'm gonna share what we're gonna be doing this year in 2024 to 2025. The first thing that we always do, I, I like to say I, I anchor our school day on a meal, either breakfast or lunch. If school isn't done before lunchtime, then I guess we're not doing it that day because I don't anchor it to dinner. But I have found starting school with a three-year-old, I think, a three-year-old and one-year-old was probably the very first year that we started homeschool. Um, I found that one buckling the one-year-old into a high chair and giving him food to eat and play with helped a lot. Not that I was making him participate, but I wanted to start him at the table participating with us. Um, and then my three-year-old giving him food to start with was helpful too. It also makes it really easy to help them stay quiet when they're chewing on something. So that is how I like to start our mornings, but I also want to give them something to stay busy with if they start to get bored, if I have a big section of something to read for that day. So along with their breakfast, usually I will give them their handwriting worksheet for the day, which is individual work, but just that's when we start that. And then we move into our family subjects. So we do a some sort of devotional every year. This year, I'm using this family discipleship planner from the Daily Grace Co. Um, it's been really cool. It is 12 months long, five days a week. And it is pretty well scheduled out for um, each month. Like for December, it specifically goes through the Christmas story. We do not do school five days a week. We shoot for four. So I knew um, that we would probably fall behind fairly quickly. And especially stuff like Christmas, I would like to be reading at the same time as Christmas. So it worked out well. We started school the beginning of July, so we just started this a little bit early. It's currently the middle of August, and we're still a little bit ahead. We are in like the first week of September in the book, is how far we've gotten. It's cool, it's got like a, a prayer prompt and a little um, piece of scripture to read each day. I'm not sure that's focusing. But it just gives you like a little a little something to start the day with. We've done a bunch of different devotionals. I just wanted to try this one out for the year and so far we are enjoying it. After that, we do our scripture memorization. This is new this year. It is um, something I found from the Simply Charlotte Mason's website. They have a beautiful box that they sell and you can buy the cards or you can print them from them. I did, oh, this box is broken. So it's based on sort of like a spiral, like you start really intensely on one Bible verse, you memorize it and then you review it pretty often. And then you review it a little bit less often and then you review it a little bit less often. Um, so they have these, you start with the daily you, remember, you work on the same Bible verse every single day until you have it memorized. Then you move it to the odd or even, so whether it's an odd day or an even day. And then you move it to a day of the week. So you would, if you make it this far, we've only made it to daily, odd, and even so far. We're on our third Bible verse. But after that, then we'll put it on a day of the week. So at that point, then we would be re memorizing one and reviewing two and then after that you can put it on a day of the month and then just keep adding to that um the i didn't print the cards from simply charlotte mason i think because of copyright rules they were only in king james version so i decided to write them out and then i decided not to use the ones that they had I decided to use the ones 
from our discipleship devotional book. So they have a Bible verse for each month to focus on memorizing. I think I am going to add some more to it. We're going through faster than, we're going through the Bible verses faster than we're going through this. So I'll be able to add more to our book um, or to this. It's been a really great system so far. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's pretty cool. I think it would be a neat way to memorize anything and then just kind of keep reviewing it every so often. I think I'm actually going to start putting our catechism questions in here too. Um, and I will show you why in a second. So after scripture memorization, we've been reading either a chapter of Psalms or a chapter of Proverbs, kind of alternating between the two. Some of the more promiscuous ones, more like blatantly talking about sexual sin. Uh, in Proverbs, I skip over for now because I have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. It's not necessary. Um, but eventually we'll get to that, I'm quite certain. So then we do sort of like a recitation type of thing. So we alternate between a hymn, which I get from um, Ambleside Online, or a church song. And by church song, I mean it's like a song that we regularly sing in church because, well, my second grader can read now, but not as fast as we're singing. Um, so on, in church on Sunday, it's really helpful for them to have songs memorized. So I will pick a song that we sing often in church and have made a playlist of those. And then we just work on like the newest one until I feel like they've really memorized it and could sing it in church without having to read it. So that's why I do that. So either a hymn from Ambleside, a church song, or catechism, which we've been using this, the Reformed Reader Catechism. Let me see, yeah. It's the re it's just www.reformedreader.org, I believe is the website you can get it from. It's a catechism for girls and boys. So it's pretty simple questions and answers. Um, it's a lot more pages than this. This is just as far as we've made it. The first question is who made you? And the answer is God made me. It's great because it has the Bible verses that go along with it. So you can reference those. Um, this paper is so precious to me because I've been marking down once they've like successfully memorized the question and answer and you can see we started that's the Gavin memorized his first one June of 2020 which was when we first started homeschooling and then Landon memorized his first one August of 2021 a year later which means he was not even two years old yet which is really cool and it just shows the power of the catechism so um this is the one we've been using for a long time we've worked our way through a lot of questions over the years it's just something we go through slowly but when i do it it was easier when it was just the beginning i go through every single question it's like once every two weeks just as a refresher i don't want them to forget what they've learned but that's also really time consuming so i think i'm going to write these on index cards and add them to my scripture memory box and just slowly work them in as well. I'm not gonna do like all of them at once, but slowly work them in. And then that way we're not reviewing as many every day or you know, the days that we do review, but it won't, we're still keeping up with them. And I also added this year, Luther's small catechism. It goes over more of, um, more creeds and stuff like that that I just wanted to touch on with my kids. So we alternate between these two once a week. So one week I'll do this one and one week I'll do this one once a week. But <laughs> I'm always up for the next best thing. So I found this catechism from Canon Press recently. It has pretty simple question and answers in it. Let's see, where's the first one? Each lesson has a few question and answers. So the first lesson has three questions and answers right here. And then it has um, a, a hymn to memorize, a lot of them based on Psalms. 
a Bible verse to memorize, which I will probably add to my scripture memory box, and then a lesson, points to remember, and questions to answer. So it's really similar to this other catechism that we've been working through, except it teaches a lot more. Um, so I don't know, I think I'm gonna start adding this in, possibly in place of our Psalms and Proverbs reading. I will probably do like the lesson. I expect us to get through each lesson faster than memorizing the questions, but I want them to be correlated. I don't wanna move ahead and do all the lessons while they're still trying to learn the questions and answers. So what I'm thinking right now I'll do is break up the lesson into a few different days as we work on the questions and answers. And then in the breaks between lessons, when we're still trying to catch up and memorize the new questions and answers, that's when we'll do our Psalms and Proverbs readings. So we'll see about that. I'm not sure. I'm excited to try it out. Okay, our next thing is some, oh, one more thing. This isn't really any sort of recitation, but last year we started learning about different missionaries. And um, I think we were doing this daily, yes. Because at some point, almost daily, it was part of kind of like a history type thing for us, subject. So I really, really enjoyed it. But the chapters are fairly long and take a pretty decent amount of time. I didn't want to stop doing it. I just didn't want to do it as often. So I included this in like one of the recitation spots in our week. Excuse me. <coughs> so right now we're reading about Eric Little. I thought it was Liddell for the longest time. And then if you don't know, he competed in the 1924 Olympics in Paris, France and um, took home gold, which is really cool. But so because all of that happened a year, 100 years ago, not one year ago, 100 years ago, he was on the news recently on World Watch News. So that was where I learned how to pronounce his name properly. Anyway, these books, these YWAM books are fantastic. They cover heavy subjects, but in a really, um, in a careful way, I guess I would say. They're not, it, it's, there's some, some tough stuff. So if you have sensitive people, which I would say I might would might have, but they handle it well, they the books are written really well and with the perspective and um, just with a focus on God throughout. So if you want to beef up these books at all, Not Consumed has some curriculum to go with it, which is great. All right, so then I try and do some sort of like fine art type thing. Um, this is something we also don't do the same thing every single day. We alternate between poems. So um, I was using the poems from Humility and Doxology. I wasn't really trying to have my kids memorize them. Some of them are pretty long if you've looked at their annual. So she has a poem for every single week of the year which I enjoyed because they were like thematic and you could do school on July 4th and find a poem related to America in, in some way. Um, <laughs> you can guess what it was. But, or even like the Raven is around Halloween, usually falls around Halloween. So it's kind of neat the way that she has it scheduled out and I would just read that poem once a week. We did that, we've probably done that since 2020. So for four years we did that. But I was ready to get a little bit more into poetry and a little bit more, like the Raven is kind of beyond my kids at that at this point. Um, and a lot of the poems in her year long poetry stuff was beyond them. So Ambleside Online just came out with this poetry and now, Anthology, anthology, volume one for beginners. It's not like little baby poems. They're still good sized poems, but I think maybe the content is a little bit lighter. I'm not sure, but we don't, we don't work a ton of memorizing them. I have been picking out stanzas that I really like from different ones. We picked out a stanza from Seal Lullaby. Um, 
and memorized that just kind of for fun. I wrote it on the whiteboard in our dining room and every now and then we would just read it and it was a fun poem to learn. So it didn't take much effort because we read it often. And then right now we're reading a, or memorizing a stanza from God Moves in Mysterious Ways, which I'm really enjoying as well. So we will rotate this, either do it like once or twice a week, read a poem from it. I think there's 16, this also is cool because it's broken down by month and every month in the year is in here, but I think it's not, there's not like one for every day of the month. So this is September only has 21 days. And I think like one of them only had 16. So I'm not really sure how they broke that down. I probably should read the book a little bit more and figure it out, but we don't do it every day. So that's fine. If it's a date, like if it's the 12th, then I go to number 12 and read that. And if it's like the 25th and there's not 25 in there, I just go to one of the back ones that I know we didn't read and read that one. So not a big deal. Um, we also do folk songs from Ambleside Online. We go through their list. My hope is that one day my kids will meet a sweet girl who was raised homeschool and they can, they hear like a random folk song and they're like, oh, I learned that when I was 10 years old. And she can be like, oh, I did too, because their moms both were getting them from Ambleside at the same time. I don't, I don't necessarily always love all the songs, but it is interesting and I've learned some cool ones. So we do that. I have them printed in binders and we just flip to whatever one. There's one for each month of the year. So we just sing it listen to it in the car and that's about it we don't do much more than that um and then we also alternate between picture study this comes from simply charlotte mason right now we're doing well i was gonna show you that side picture study portfolio right now we're doing durer um i think so so far we've only done one artist per year but I start, started displaying the art pieces. It works out that, that we do this once every two weeks. And I started displaying the art pieces in our dining room so that we can see them all the time. And I was thinking, I'm gonna be really sad. We'll be done with this curriculum halfway through the year. I'm gonna be really sad when I don't have one to put up there anymore. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna get it, do a second one for the second half of the year. The only thing, you know, it takes a few minutes to do. I'm not, I like front loading our work for the beginning of the year. And so this was my hesitation was I like getting it all done and making our days lighter and lighter and lighter throughout the year as we finish different curriculums. But um, I just really have been enjoying this. So I decided to do a second one. I just bought the um, Genesis booklet. So they would either do an artist or they have some that are based on different books in the Bible. We did Matthew last year and really enjoyed that. And this year I thought we would do Genesis because we've been studying a lot in Genesis. So I thought that would be really neat. So we do this once every two weeks. And then on the other week, the odd week, we do a composer study from Simply Charlotte Mason. I don't have anything to show you for that because I just do the PDF and then I print it in my binder. We each have a binder and I print it and keep it in mind. And we do one, so that's like, it breaks down to about nine lessons. And so we'll split that between the year two. So yeah, that works out to be about 36 weeks, nine, 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 and nine, because there's each of those. Yeah, if that makes sense. Something like that. My math is off, but it's close. 32 lessons, something like that. Um, and then we do a character study, some sort of habit formation. The basis uh, that we do is laying down the rails from Simply Charlotte Mason. I We've been doing that since 2020. I absolutely love it. I pick six subjects or topics per year, which I think how, sh I think how Charlotte Mason did it or how they suggest you do it is like two per term. Is that right? And there's be six terms the way that Charlotte Mason did it, I think. Um, the way I do it is I just do six and I just go through them one a day and it never lasts the entire year. So I beef it up with other stuff. Um, so we just finished 
fundamentals for kids the first box this is a really cool little like subscription thing that is all about teaching your kids uh, like manners and stuff etiquette introduction to etiquette so this was the first box and it came the just the first box came with like a storybook flashcards a fun board game a jungle challenge set treasure box activity fun videos they make it really fun just learning about simple things like why we don't pick our noses in front of other people so we enjoyed this a lot the subscription don't let that scare you because you can just buy one and then pause it and then anytime you're ready to buy another one you can unpause it so we bought three and then I paused it and we've done one so far and we're probably not going to do the other two until the end of the year so I'm not going to reactivate it for a while. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool that they let you just do it like that. But then it keeps you in the right order so you're not ordering. Like, you don't have to start over with the very first box on accident, if that makes sense. After Fundamentals for Kids, so we're, we just finished that. We're going to be doing the Strong and Smart book for boys. A Boy's Guide to Building Healthy Emotions by David Thomas. We did this at the end of last year. It was really great. Um, each, there's just short little lessons. It's actually designed for, I think, a boy to go through by himself. There's a, a, a book written to parents on the same subject, but I just go through it with them. Um, it has a lot of neat ideas that even I, <laughs> even I use. This morning I was going to, I had a funeral to go to. It was a sunrise funeral at 6 30 in the morning on the beach. So it was dark while I was driving there and I wasn't speeding, but I was probably going nine over. And it's a, it's a road that this, the speed limit's like 25. And I know that cars get pulled over there all the time because it's such a low speed limit. While I was driving and all of a sudden in my rear view mirror, I see red and blue lights. It's, it was just one of those signs that tells you how fast you're going. And I guess it lights up red and blue to scare you if you're going too fast. It, was, it wasn't even for me. It was for people going in the opposite direction. But I saw it in my rear view mirror. And automatically my heart rate started going up even though I knew I, knew I wasn't in trouble. So one of the things in this book that we learned last year was combat breathing. This is what David Thomas calls it. Or square breathing, if you've ever heard of that. So it's the idea that if you're like worked up and you need to calm yourself down, you make a square with your finger. And each time you move your finger, you, you so you breathe in for four seconds, then you breathe out for four seconds, and then you breathe in for four seconds, and breathe out for four seconds. So it helps you calm down. And I was literally <laughs> doing that in the car this morning because I was like, Lindsay, you're fine. Relax. You're not getting pulled over. <laughs> oh, yeah. So in case you wanted to know. Um, we also did, I'll just show you. I actually have it right here. The Brother Study Bible Study by Not Consumed at the beginning, very, very beginning of this year. We started at the end of last year, finished at the beginning of this year, and that was awesome too. Doesn't have to be just for brothers, by the way. It's written more towards siblings than brothers, but it was very insightful for me as a parent. So, um, so then I heard the advice given one time that your like morning basket or school day, whatever, should include something fun for everyone, something that someone en everybody enjoys. And I used to do, um, oh, what are those cards called? Brain quests? Brain quests, yeah, that's it, where it has like four questions that are kind of silly, kind of fun. Those were like my thing when, at this point in the day, everybody's kind of starting to fizzle out, starting to get distracted, to get bored, whatever. And Brain Quest always brought them back in before we had to buckle down and get a little bit deeper. It was a fun thing that my kids really enjoyed, but it wasn't like specific to them. And I didn't really feel like it was actually teaching them that much. It was just kind of 
seeing what they already knew. So this year I decided to mix it up a little bit. We're doing unit studies in place of that. So we're gonna take turns picking unit studies. I went first because I'm the mommy, I'm the teacher, and I chose the Olympics. It wasn't my favorite. I feel like the Olympics in general was kind of hyped up and a disappointment this year. So um, it wasn't necessarily my favorite unit study, but the next one we're doing, Gavin Thicht, it is spy training. Look at how thick, look at how many, I didn't even do everything in it. This is from, oh, what's her name? Um, the Waldock way, Waldock, 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 I'm not sure how you pronounce it, sorry. Um, so it was the Olympic study, but this one seems way cooler, no offense. <laughs> So I'm really excited to do this with them. And then after this, we're going to do a wilderness survival study that Landon picked. And then we'll rotate through. Again, I have some ideas for after that, but this one's gonna last us a while. I think this turned out to be like 50 something lessons maybe. So that is my hope is that that'll be like the thing that they're like, yes, now we get to do our spy study. They're already excited about it. I don't know if you saw, but the first thing on here is to pick your code name, so. That will be fun. And then, so that is all the stuff that I kind of consider like our morning basket. It's um, just very little bits and pieces that aren't really true subjects. It's just stuff that I want to include in our homeschool. And it lasts a lot less time than it took me to explain that. So um, then we do what I consider our true together family subjects. They are Bible, science, and history. For Bible, we use the Answers in Genesis curriculum. I absolutely love this curriculum. We started it last year and we are not yet done with it. If you look at it, I'll show you, let me find the beginning of one. So like lesson 11, there it starts with a video and then there's an optional object lesson. Um, this is cool, it has background information for the parent. And then there's all these smaller sections. Well, my kids are not gonna sit there and stay attentive. This was actually a halfway short one. But they're not gonna listen to pages and pages of information where they're literally just sitting there listening. So I break it down into much smaller sections. This one was fairly short. I only broke it down into six sections. Sometimes they're broken down into a lot more than that. Um, and that just helps keep our lessons shorter. But this it goes in so deep that we are still in Genesis. We are only to Abraham at this point, literally over a year worth of doing this. It also comes with workbooks for kids and Part of what I love so much about this curriculum is that this is the teacher book, teacher, um, and then you can get, they have the kids like worksheets, workbooks are broken down. I want to say the first one's like preschool through first grade, and then the next one will be the next few years, and then the next few years, but it's on, this is book one, year one, year one, creation to Joseph. So when we started this, I only had a preschooler and a first grader, so that was the book I got. Next we'll do year two, when we do that, I'll have a younger, much, you know, probably a kindergartner and maybe a third grader. So I'll get the first book for the kids and then also the next grade up book. And then what's neat is just that you can rotate through. It's, I think it's gonna be a four year, I'm not sure if they even have all four books out yet but I, I'm pretty sure their plan is to have four books, but for any age, and you can just adjust it to the age and cycle through. And that's like my favorite type of curriculum. So really excited about that. Um, we also have been doing BSF. We did BSF for the first time last year and the amount of homework kind of shocked me a little bit. So this year I am going into it more prepared. So out of four school days a week, 
one of those days, instead of doing that Bible lesson, I have set aside to do our BSF homework to kind of help us manage that a little bit better this year. For science, we use the Good and the Beautiful Little Hearts and Hands. Um, our first year of science we did two years ago when my son was in kindergarten. They did not have these out then. They just had what they called K through eight science courses. They were very specific. We did birds. A lot of it was way over their heads. My, I mean, my son wasn't even in preschool. My youngest wasn't even in preschool yet. And he participated a lot with that and loved it, loved what they were learning. But a lot of it was too advanced for them. So when they came out with these, which I think are intended for preschool through third grade, and now that there's, now they're calling those other ones K through, or three through eighth grade. So they've like bumped them up in their levels now. Um, when they came out with these, these are just, ugh, I love these so much. They're really short lessons that are beautiful, of course, because it's the good and the beautiful. It's fun subjects, it's easy, definitely geared towards younger kids much more easily. Almost to the point that I feel like it's not enough, almost, but I feel like it's a really good base for my kids, just a starter science introduction type stuff, and they really enjoy it. So we're doing the Wind and the Waves this year. This is only 30 lessons, I believe, but I break e up each lesson into about three more lessons. So it works out to be about 90 lessons for the whole school year for us, maybe a little bit less, some of the things I cut out. Um, so this is one thing, once it's done, our days get shorter. <laughs> I front load our curriculum and as soon as this is done, then we have no more science for the rest of the year and I'm okay with that because they're learning about science type stuff all the time. So, um, our ne my next thing. So what I what I found is that we can do a lot of things if I do them in small chunks, and that is that's just how I've learned to do everything. Is if it seems too challenging, then break it down in a smaller chunk. Hence, <laughs> the Tuttle Twins. I really, really, really enjoyed this curriculum last year. We started it, made it about a week, and then quit it. <laughs> because each chapter is so long, so good. It's really, really interesting in a fun story format. Um, but it was really long. And so I decided this year we were gonna try it again just broken down even more than I had broken it down. They also have a lot of worksheets that go along with it and fun activities to do that go along with it. We're only doing this once a week because I also found a history curriculum that I hoped, hoped to be like our main history curriculum for all the years, hopefully. This is from Simply Charlotte Mason also. It is a six year rotation. <clears throat> and then kind of like the other one, the Bible one that I was telling you about, it has like the base for what everybody's gonna learn in each lesson, but then it has additional stuff for each grade level going up from there. So for example, this is a perfect example. The lessons are short. It's mostly based on a little bit of reading and narration. This is like, so this is what it tells you to do for the family. And then it tells you what to do for grades four through six in addition. And then if you're seven through nine, this is what you're gonna do in addition. And 10 through 12, that's what you'll do in addition to the family thing. So right now it doesn't, I'm not doing much beyond just the family stuff. And once it gets to the additional stuff, I imagine that that will be more independent reading and working and stuff like that. So. So far, I'm really enjoying this. What's neat about it is that it's not just the history. Obviously, we're starting in the beginning. Genesis, we're starting with Genesis, but it's intertwining history and Bible history. It's not leaving them out. So we're talking about Abraham in here also right now. We're doing lots of Abraham and Genesis, which is why I chose to do the Genesis picture study for later in the year. Um, 
we are also talking about ancient Egyptians and what their lives looked like at the same time. So it's kind of cool the way it is intertwining both of those things. So this kind of shows you, uh, there you go, a little bit. It shows you what the different books are there. So yeah, so those are all of our family subjects. I hope you are off to a great school year and I'll talk to you later.